afternoon to all and welcome to practicing programming in C where we're going to be doing some more threading stuff <clears throat> so yeah just bear with this while I just sort of get some music on and stuff um, 51 mins yeah so I'm probably going to try and do like an hour and a half I reckon uh, I'd like to listen to Rave Death though which is about an hour long. Uh, Neil Young, he could be topical actually, couldn't he? Oh, it's the, gosh, is that 50 years? Wow. Let's go for harvest and let's put that on. It's, it's quite a big anniversary. Yeah, and that'll give us a nice nice amount of time. Um, I was kind of hoping to stream a bit earlier, um, maybe to start, well, I was hoping to start maybe three o'clock at some point, one point I was sort of hoping to, hoping to do, um, but I had construction guys in doing stuff on the work, uh, stuff on, doing work on the window, <laughs> windows actually. Um, it just seems like wherever you look, whatever field you're in, there's always broken, there's always windows, it's always windows, it's just, it just needs to be, um, we need a better, need a, a better solution. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, yeah, they've been working really hard all, all today. Um, and uh, yeah, so while they were here, I couldn't really stream, but I could actually sort of plan some stuff. So you can kind of see here actually what I've been doing here. I was just laterally sort of planning out, planning out stuff for the for Cinema's database, sort of how to actually get all of the bits and bobs into it because we're going to have to store everything in the database in order to actually operate as a, as a kind of, as a thing that can work with dynamic websites, basically. Um, <coughs> but the thing that, um, the thing that we do today is threading mock-up. It's basically getting the the various bits of the program to um, kind of write to the same database. So I'll just show you what I mean. We've currently got we've got this thing, and it takes inputs. Okay, you can see that input up there. That if I kind of I press enter, it's going to put it to a database, which it has just done. So I'll just demonstrate that. That's what happens. Uh, where is this? I think it's the. Th I think I've put them in here. Yeah. So that would have been the user interface database, and you can see there that the word import has just gone into the thing. Now I can also say something else. Uh, it can only be. It can only be eight characters though, so <laughs> I could put in. Stream, yeah, it's just stick to streaming. And if I reload this, we'll, we should see stream has popped up. Okay, so we've got that in one of the da databases, and in another database, we've got file names and file lengths. So that is going to be in the threading. Directory, isn't it? So we've got three files currently in there one, two, and three. Can I also count? No, I don't know about that. Is it word count? Well, that's not really very helpful. But if I just make another file, another file what have we got? We've got a bunch of found into test, I see another test and test. So if I just Let's just do a file name for today. Oh, it's Valentine's Day. It's to say Happy Valentine's Day. Okay, so you can see that when I save that, the, the file system event came to, came through into here, and when it came through into there, it then wrote into this. Ooh, one direction. It 
it should have written, yeah, so 2022, uh, the 2nd, the 22 February the 14th, and this value down here should be the number of characters, it's, it's the length of the file, so it's 17 bytes apparently. Let's just see if that can kind of tallies with what we'd expect. So we think it should be 23 bytes, do we? Oh, sorry, they think it should be 23 bytes. Yeah, well, it should be 23. And how did you see that I get? Oh, sorry, it's hex, isn't it? Um, yeah. So we've got 17 in hex. Yeah, okay, so that is what what we should be doing. Twenty three and twenty three, yeah. Cool. So what we're doing in today's stream is basically getting these two databases. Getting these two databases into the same database. Okay, and to do that we're going to make a, a job queue. And as I say, while the window guys were here, I sort of um, I tried to figure out how to go about this job queue sort of thing. And I think I've sussed out how to do it. Um, it's actually there's not actually that much to it actually, to be to be perfectly honest with you. If you don't mind me being honest. So I mean I'll just I'll just do it. it? I'll just write out what I can kind of remember. So get a right database server database server. Um The job queue stuff, where's that going to be? Uh, it might not matter where you actually put it. I'm just thinking in terms of where you have to declare it. Let's stick it down. Stick it down here. Yeah, let's put it just just before main. Okay, so we're gonna have jobs. And we're going to have two types of jobs. We're gonna have a user interface job and a file system job, file IO job. So I have a null one. That's going to be important. Let's just call them that just for now. And we're going to have a job, which is going to have a type ID. And then here, it's like the data. And I think I was in two minds about how to do this. Um, you can either do it with a void style or you could do it in a way that basically I 
arch, I'll tell you what. No, I don't think you could do it with, with a void star. Could you? I think you, no, I think you do need to be able to store the, I think you do need to be able to store the data in the actual type itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do a union here. So in the UI version, The back of the input string length. Uh, in the file IO one, we've got the file path. Okay, got that. And we've got a file length. How are we doing so far with our building? So basically what I want to do really is to have this on the one hand and these two things on the other to occupy the same portion of memory. So I always forget how to do how to actually do unions. Is that correct? I feel like I want to look this up actually. initialize the value can you? <laughs> That's cool.
Oh, you can name the union. Huh. I might kind of keep this page open, actually. You can access data members I and C further in the scope. Yeah, I, yeah I, I do think this is right actually. To be to be honest with you, I do think that this and this should occupy the same space. So let's let's just go with that. So we've got the job, and then additionally we want to have the job queue. So it's going to have a number of jobs. And I'm just going to sort of define max job counts to be, let's just say you can have 64 jobs. You can fly to it once. I'm just doing this in an array. Then I'm going to have like a couple of indexes. Um, next job to set. What do I call that? Oh, next to take, I think, and the next. Is it take and push? I mean, usually it's like I did have a look up, a look for this after I after I actually kind of forget stuff out and they call it like NQ and DQ and they also don't use what two uh, or, no I think they do use two indexes actually um, yeah anyway so we've got the job and the job count job so that's going to be this and this array Next job to take, next job to push. Well, let's say push job. Onto a job queue. And the data. Actually, I think at this point, maybe uh, this could take a well a type first of all. But then I reckon this could take a void star as, it, as its data. Uh, and then it will actually set that up. Because the problem would be if we're taking all of these things individually. It could get a bit hairy, maybe. And basically the data I'm sort of talking about would be of the form this, you know, point to one of these. So we want to listen to the code Oh nice one. <laughs> what are you working on, uh, FDA Zero? And FDA Zero, you you are a um, you're a device, aren't you? Pretty sure I might have you on my system, actually. Uh, where are you, FTA Zero? I feel like I do, I have seen you around, certainly. Uh, yeah, anyway, so push job is going to, it's going to have to get the current job, isn't it? Uh, 
and this is this value here in pushing a job it's need, it needs to be the next job to push and then we have to say if it is null if the type is equal to JID null I think I called it then we can proceed otherwise it's like um, job key full But if it's if it is um, if it's null, then we can continue. Um, and all we say is we switch on the type because we've got the two types of things, haven't we? Not even right actually the JID. Oh JTI. Yeah, of course, job type ID. Voxel engine. Oh, nice one. Thumbnail is really educational and motivational. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they can be, actually. Thumbnails can be educational and motivational. I mean, the way I've done, I haven't actually set my thumbnails. If you check out the, the playlist, for practicing programming in C. I don't usually agree flat out, by the way. I just do that because, well, usually I, I do it when it's uh, private browsing. Um, yeah, the thumbnails here, I just let it automatically be set. So yeah, they can be really educational and motivational. Uh, although, I guess in Sabat, what you're saying here is that the thumbnails, that these thumbnails are really educational and motivational, thank you. So yeah, I guess I appreciate it. <laughs> So in, in this case, we need to get our data, don't we? So that, yeah, the job J. And we're talking about the job data. Ah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, the job, it's, the, it's this, isn't it? It's the job file IO data. And the thing is, we could have, well, we have got stuff that's just ca character arrays. We, we'll need to copy into this, I reckon. Uh, so we need to do a copy string. I think we do have that. Sorry, I need to cast it. Don't I need to actually get the get the thing out. Basically, I'm going to be copying. No, no, hang on, hang on. Have I screwed this up actually? No, I haven't. No, because I need to be saying this, don't I? 
So I'm talking about the data. Sorry. I need to be copying from here this file name. Some more stuff. So size of GA file or data. Am I creating a job through job queue per thread or one job queue per author? So what I'm gonna what I'm doing is I'm making a job queue for um, a single job queue for all threads. Um, and the way that I'm going to lock it is to oh yeah i need to do that actually don't i i need to have a mutex for each of these indexes um not sure if that's the right type um do i have mutexes yet Oh, it's crazy that I don't even have mutexes in the threading mockup thing. I'll have them in a piece of okay, mutex T. Yeah, so the way that I hope it's going to work, I've never done this before, FDA0. So this is all a big learning experience for me. Um, I can show you what I, what I kind of practiced earlier actually. I sort of mentioned it when I started the stream that I couldn't actually stream earlier today because I had people in to, to work on the windows. But I could actually sort of uh, try and get a feel for what a, a queue is actually because I haven't, I haven't actually used a queue before either. Um, So yeah, in terms of like the structure of it, it's like one queue. And I'm kind of hoping, yeah, I made all these, these great, these notes here, mutex is for pushing and taking jobs. Um, ah, interesting. Yeah, right. Yeah, focus, you couldn't feel the benefit of them. Interesting. Yeah, did I consider that? I think I was only thinking in terms of how to lock it, whether having the, having the lock on the whole queue or having the lock on the, the individual indices. I think that's what I was sort of um, pondering between. I'm not sure that, that thought of having multiple queues per thread. No, I don't think I did think of that. Um, but basically what I'm going to be trying to do here is I reckon that the most delay free and working version should be separate mutex locking and setting this type last. If you have one queue to do locking, then you have more ways to tie them. The more cards you have, and the future people have, it will go. Yeah, right. I mean, basically, the reason I think that I only have the one queue is that I want to be writing to the one file. The the point of this is. It's basically to get these two databases into the one database. So I wanted to have one thing that actually um, that actually writes to to one file. Uh, if that makes sense. But I wanted the input to come from multiple places. So that's where the different threads is, are going to come in. And the different indices. 
no, sorry, there's not the different densities at all. The, the different densities are just for um, the next one to fill and the next one to take. Um, yeah, so here we go. How many here to compare and swap atomic intrinsic, which is a little better? The locking bit is also slower, so for many cores because. Compare and swap atomic intrinsic. Every time you change it, maybe not too low. Interesting. Let me make a note of compare and swap intrinsic. It's a little bit of the locking, but also. Yeah. But let me put the note in threading. Dot save. I think it's here. I've got all the notes for stuff. Yeah. I'll just stick it to the bottom. So compare and swap atomic. I haven't looked at this at all, so um, I'll just leave that for for reading, kind of um, sort of off stream, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, so, you know, just writing all this prose today, <laughs> um, and kind of concluded, as I say, that the most delay-free and working version should probably be a separate meters locking and setting this type last. Just dealing. Interesting. I think I know what you mean. Uh, Possibly. Yeah, I mean, maybe sort of talking about scheduling a little bit. I'm not sure. Maybe not, maybe it's a bit different again. Um. Yeah, because what I was learning the other week was about different ways you can schedule it. So you can schedule it just the normal way, which is basically, they call it other, don't they? Um, I think can, I, can I find it in here? Oh, actually, I've got the notes in the threading.c file. Yeah, sadly, I haven't really gotten. Yeah, I think I. Yeah, I always, uh, I always struggle to find exactly what they were, where the man page was for this. But basically, one of the options is other. And one of the uh, options, oh, there we go, it's actually right there, isn't it? <laughs> so you've got shed other, shed batch, and shed idle. And shed, uh, shed other just uh, defers to the, the uh, niceness value of the program. So if we just go into htop, you know, it's this value here determines like how the thing is scheduled. I have got threading mockup running, haven't I? So threading mockup has a niceness value of zero, apparently. Gosh. Well, that's not very nice. So basically, what that means is, is it's just going to be prioritized, doesn't it? Is that right? <laughs> it's 
I was expecting it to be higher, actually. It's only higher than zero. In fact, there's a lot of zeros here, aren't there? Like, why is that? Why is Vim a niceness of zero? <laughs> Maybe zero is okay, and it's like minus 20, which which is like the less less nice things. But yeah, anyway, so you've got the other, which is using the niceness value to determine the scheduling. Um, if you spin like half resources. <laughs> it could be, well, I don't think it's determined by the system, is it? Like the system doesn't come along and say, this program is like hogging resources, you're not nice. I don't think, does it? I feel like it's set by the program. And the program just declares itself to be, you know, zero nice or minus 20 nice. I could be wrong about that. Um, but anyway, you've got other, and then you've got batch. And batch basically means that it sort of slightly deprioritizes the thing as if it has a higher niceness value but it doesn't actually alter the niceness value itself if that makes sense and then the shed idle is something that is very kind of deprioritized uh, again i think that also doesn't touch the niceness it just sort of says, regardless of the niceness, it's just going to be a really like low priority uh, thing. The thing I was actually trying to find, by the way, was not to do with that. It was actually to do with, oh, it's real time. It was the real time scheduling, where you can have like round robin scheduling. Using winless. <laughs> yeah, that's been blocked for quite a while. I think from my very first stream, like, 55 years ago. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Well, hopefully this, this stuff over here will kind of be a nice a glimpse into the other side for you, I guess. Uh, that's if I get anything kind of working. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there, there we were. Okay, so in Q.C, this is just me kind of making notes for how to do it. In fact, while I'm here, since I've got it all placed, let me just refresh my memory. So you've got the push job and take job. Next job to take and next job to fill is what I called it. To fill and take. Sound like a comedy double act, fill and take. Oh, we've got this problem again. It's jump to auth.c, which is not in our project. Why do we need fill mutex? Um, let me just have a look. Uh, what was it? Q. So the fill mutex. So the fill meters would prevent multiple overlapping pushes. Um, so 
So let's just have a look at the push function. Yeah, I think what could happen? What could happen is that you could have two threads both calling push job at the same time and they both get to this line at the same time with the index being the same and they both just start to work on that same job isn't it? <coughs> I think that was the purpose of the fill mutex You know, so I'd basically be coming in and in the in the actual multi threaded one, I'd be saying here, wouldn't I? Like the Q next job to fill mutex will be ours. You know, we'll be uh, uh, setting it or whatever the function is. And if that mutex is currently being locked by another thread, then Uh, we'll just block on this uh, block on this line, won't we? Yeah, that, that, that was just, yeah, just occurred to me just then. Actually, is that what I'm actually doing? <laughs> yeah, I mean now that I think about it, now that you mention it. Well, yeah, I think I am. Yes, I am. I am making thread. I am making jobs multi-threaded because I've got the two threads, haven't I? I've got the user interface thread. This person here. You know, when you when you press enter, you'll be pushing a job onto the queue, and down here when you're in the threading test directory you know when you make a change to a file yeah when you when you make the change to the file this thread will also push a, push a job onto the queue Uh, so yeah, I mean technically or theoretically you could have you know, they, these two things happening at the same time you, know, you could have that file system event coming through and you could also have um, well this is complete garbage because it's just you can have this going through as well if you present it up there and down there at the same time. So yeah, I think I am creating jobs multi-threaded. Uh, and then the taking of the jobs multi-threaded. I think actually, to be fair, that might actually just be single-threaded. Because there will only be one person who can actually take these jobs off and you know satisfy the jobs basically or, or work on the jobs uh, I mean to be concrete about it they're going to take the job off the queue and they're going to be writing whatever the job tells it to do into the database so yeah the taking of jobs will just be single threaded which means as you kind of just alluding to is that I don't need a mutex for the taking because there's only one thread to do it. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that might be the case. We'll have to see when we get there. So yeah, right now I usually do systems where main thread manages all the work single threaded and other cores are working. The main thread manages all the work. Ah, yeah, yeah. So that's like, dude, is that like a job manager? Is that like this? Is that like, like option two? Let me just see this again. This is where the main thread manages all the work single threaded and other cores are working. Oh no, it's not, is it? You're basically saying that the main thread. Yeah, I think you're saying that the main thread kind of goes through its business and it uh, pushes jobs onto the queue. And there's only one person who does that pushing onto the queue. And then you're saying that you've got um, other, th other cores are pulling off the thread to do the work on them. Single thread meters can go on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think I was just sort of thinking in terms of Well, really I was bolting onto the solution. Because all of the all this um file was supposed to be just learning how to do queues. Um and then it was just at the end I was sort of thinking, well, hang on a minute. Yeah, I've got the queue, but how do you actually how do you deal with the multi-threaded part of it <laughs> and I just sort of thought it's going to be like a balanced thing where you need to do the same with both ends but yeah as you say if you're only consuming on one th if you've only got one thread consuming the, the jobs then you probably don't need the mutex for that so yeah let's let's um let's do a little bit more so taking a taking a filling so what's the problem here don't like so we've got a fixed size thing here oh, that's all thing here. Yeah. you just have to bear with me while I actually just find the actual file that we're talking about I mean, it's probably more like copy string no format actually. So the copy string wants a like a desk array. Yeah, I think if I if I do just copy string no format, which is really what I want, we should be in, in business. Oh yeah, of course. Sorry, I haven't got all the way to the um, to the actual file name. <laughs> so, what does this now say? So is it wanting a st an actual string? Just bear with me while I just... Yeah, it is. Oh, I need to pass the format. That's all it is. Is that right? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. 
sod it. I can just wrap it. And I'll wrap it zero I. Because we could fill up the entire buffer, basically. Uh, all that means is that it's going to be the I stands for implicit, basically. So it's like wrap wrap zero implicitly. So wrap zero all wrap zero would do is it would take a null terminated string and just suss out how long it is and then set the base pointer to be the start of the string and set the length to be the string length. But if you pass if you use wrap zero i then you can give it a length. And it will just it will um I mean the length will be that at maximum. But if you've got like a a non null terminated string Yeah, if you've got if you've got like say you've got a like a car array of eight bytes and they're all filled and then whatever comes after that is none of your business then this wrap zero i will enable you to actually produce a string out of that <laughs> but also when you're doing like when you've got a car array that's got like a you know eight bytes say and only three are filled then the implication is that if you've only filled three <laughs> Then the rest of them are going to be null terminate. Uh, they're going to be nulls. So basically, that's 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 all that is. It's not very interesting, actually. <laughs> I thought it was worth sort of uh, just mentioning. So the other thing we want to say is the the file size, isn't it? And then down here, we're going to say a similar thing, but the only difference is going to be that we're not, we don't have a size, we have a length. It's UI isn't it, I think. Yeah, it will be. So. The UI job data we're going to cast to that, and then we're going to say that the the UI data I think it's a string, isn't it? This is going to be the UI job data string. UI string yeah I think that's probably okay okay so finally we've got we've got our job set haven't we so having set the job we need we now need to say the following let me see if I can remember this because I actually I thought there'd be a concise way of doing this, and there certainly is. Okay, so this is going to just kind of wrap the index. Uh, oh yeah, the type. So wasn't there something to do with let me just check my notes again. Because there was something that I needed to do. 
setting this type last. Make push job and take job set to this type after they've done all they need to with the job. So this type. So yeah, we still got the job, haven't we? The point of that, let me just so yeah, I was sort of thinking about this like, do you put the music on the whole queue or do you put it on the individual indices? So, if you mute, if you put a lock on the whole queue, it's the simultaneous push and take. Is this a problematic case? So the problem is, if the put job, if, if push job sets this type, thus establishing it as a complete job ready to be taken, just before take job checks if this is, this type is equal to not null, if it's not equal to null, and also before push before push job itself sets the actual data, then we're screwed. So that's why we need to set this type last rather than actually looking at the whole queue, because they're not actually looking at each other's. Uh, mutexes. You know, it's only the push. The push function is only looking at the push mutex, and the take thing is only looking at the take mutex, which we might not need in at all. But, but yeah, that was the point of that. So we make sure that we set the type last, even after we've incremented the the thing actually. So yeah, I think that's correct. And then the take job. So we're going to have a job. It's going to return a job. And we only need the queue for this. So it's I think we just do the same thing, don't we? The same kind of an idea up here. Next job to take. And this one is if the J type is not equal to J JTI, I don't know. Yeah. At this point the job queue is empty. Yeah, so if that's not null. Then we also need to sort of if it's not old, then we do exactly the same thing as that guy up there. Let me just by the way I just actually got a note to actually set the new text. I mean, actually, why why don't I just do it? <laughs> um, it's p thread mutex lock. Yeah, it's just lock and a lock, isn't it? Or is it try lock? It might be try lock. So there's no data passed. So the job, what we're talking about doing here is setting the results information. So 
So we don't need to do this, I don't think, do we? Actually, yeah, we do. We need to get it from the job. Don't we? Except for the fact that this is... No, we don't. We don't need to do that at all. <laughs> because it's already in the correct date. It's already in the correct format. The correct type, rather. Sorry, that's not correct. It's that. And then this here. File IO data. Incompatible time. Oh, right. It's this again. Okay. So this one is going to be very similar. I thought that'd be wrong. So what is it actually called again? It's just UI data. Okay. Right, great. So we've actually got the the information from the job. Uh, and then having got that information, we want to say that the next job to take, we want to increment the next job to take. Plus one, modded it with the max. Fill, yeah, and then finally we can actually null out that. Oh, I'll tell you what, actually, the, all of this job stuff will have to go above those functions, won't it? The cinema function and reference manager function and user interface function. Because otherwise they won't be able to call it.
So all of this is to do with Cinera, I think. Yeah, that's the Cinera. So we're back right all the way up to here, <laughs> interestingly. Yeah, and then having done done our stuff, we just unlock it for the next guy to come along. Yeah, I mean, actually, now that I come to think of it, thread. Oh no we haven't, sorry. I was going to say we've only got one thread that pushes on a, a certain type of job. But while that's true, we, we have multiple threads that push on whatever type of job they need. So yeah, this is necessary, this push job thing. Sorry, this um, this meter, this, this locking is necessary for the, for the push job. And the tape, the take job, let's just do ourselves a mutex. Now we need to don't we need to initialize a mutex? Let's just go back to the threading.c file. Yes, we need to initialize the mutex. Now, I'm also interested just to see. Okay, so we're not using try lock, we're just using lock. So let's use lock. So we want to initialize the things and we want to use lock. Oh, oh yeah. We just need to. We actually need to create the job thread, job queue. I suppose if we can make it global. Sorry, while well, I'm just here, let me just. Initialize it. It's a p thread. Let's do it before the threads as well. Actually, p thread mutex in it. It's going to be two of them, two in it. That is just it.
uh, to take what was it? Next next job to something mutex. Fill. Probably the way around. Because we're gonna have to fill before we take. I'm just interested to see what happens. Do we die? No. Bit of a shame we don't have backspacing in here. Oh, it's no letters. Bizarre. Just making sure there's not going to sort of crash on us or anything like that. Yeah, we seem to be okay. Oh, we also need to destroy mutexes, don't we? The initialization, they've got the creation, we've got the jointion, and then we've got the destruction. So I think, how can we just test this a little bit? We can just make the threads. We can just say, push, push your job onto the queue, can't we? For every thread. So here, where we would do the get or write database is get or write to database. We should have two of these. This is a user import and the Cinero one. So yeah, wherever these happen, rather than actually getting our right into the database themselves, let's just say that what they actually do is create Yeah, yeah. That job. So here we go. Did we give it a void? We didn't give it a void starter, do we? It is a void star. Yes, it is a void star. Because I was sort of thinking, well, of course, because I, I did this whole switch today, didn't I? Okay, cool. So the push job is going to happen. And we're saying it's a JTI file IO. And then let's go to the other day, the other function. And this is going to be a UI. And again, we've got the entry. So that's the database user entry, user input entry. Now, oh, it's a different type, isn't it? It's a different type, isn't it? Oh. 
Ah, that's interesting. Because you can't really well cast this to that other thing, can you? <laughs> But you could do it, you could use it directly. This should be the canon canonical thing. I sort of feel like I feel like these need to be elevated. The database types need to be elevated above the job stuff. I suppose another way of also looking at it is to say Yeah, this is kind of interesting actually You see there's the job type thing Yeah, I mean, all I'm going to be doing here actually is copying that information into the, this this new job. Let's do it. Let's do it, bodies. No, no, no. Let's not. So, uh, so that's where that's where that discrepancy was. Elevating these database things. <clears throat> yeah, let's just do it. Let's not mull over it too much. still build. And then you should be able to see right this and this are now identical. <coughs> so rather than using UI job data, use a database user input entry.
and get rid of this. And similarly with this file IO job data, use a database center entry. And get rid of this. Now we should get some stuff. Yeah. I mean, these these things are now kind of like aligned, but this might not. This might come back to bite me. We'll see. Oh yeah, so the try lock. Okay, so let's just try and print out all, all our jobs, and also just before we do that, let's say the max job count. Let's just reduce this to like a tractable number, so 16. Oh yeah. So you're gonna have different amounts of information depending on the uh, job type. So first of all we're gonna print out the type.
very cheesy. Like, this is, it's all just... Uh, it's all just test stuff. So it doesn't need to be actually particularly great. cautious of this because it's it's not going to necessarily be null terminated you see okay so hopefully that's going to print some jobs this is going to print the job queue so let's just say that every time we push a job we just call print job queue I mean, we should be seeing, should we not? Sixteen jobs. <coughs> so, what am I missing? that call on line one six two copy string no formats we passed a buffer too small UI data string to contain a null terminated h point plus one oh interesting so copy string no format shouldn't be Let's use this. <laughs> Let's use clear copy string, no terminate.
so... <laughs> oh, we, we always need to... Oh, sorry. If the type is null, we just print out null. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the, in the default case, we just print f. New line. <laughs> okay. So we've got the UI wanting to send help, and we've got. Can we do this guy? Yeah, cool. Got the file I wanting to send. The file name of 2022.0214 and the length of 40. Right, nice. So I'll tell you what, now that I've kind of got the queue at least potentially going, can I do anything a bit more stress testy? Well, nah, it's six o'clock. Let's call it a day. And let's come back to it tomorrow. Not sure what time. So again, got the window guys coming again tomorrow. Uh, I sort of need to try and suss out these Venetian blinds of mine. <laughs> uh, I only moved in here a couple of months ago and had to suss out how to actually maneuver them. And I felt like I managed to do it, but the uh, the guy who did the the windows today, there were three guys, the, the first guy who came out, the main guy, uh, raised the Venetian blinds, but like when they went home, I tried to lower them again and I just kind of can't, can't toss out how to actually, it's basically releasing the, the brake mechanism. So yeah, hopefully, gonna, hopefully I'll be able to sort that out. I'm going to have another go now, uh, if I can't toss it out, then I'll ask them if they can that's it. But anyway, that is not programming, that is home uh, maintenance, whatever you call it. So yeah, anyway, call it there, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take it easy. Thank you.